Welcome to Core Memory Unlocked. We're in it, man. 93. 1993. It's here. We're doing it. We had a preview episode, but now we're here and we're doing it live. We're doing, we're doing it, it live. live. And I feel like we need to do the big daddy of the year for the get go. And that's uh, Jurassic Park, baby. Before yeah. I do that. Hi, I'm Zach. That's Justin. That's cartoon Justin. Yeah. for Hi. people that are only acquaintances. Uh, thanks for being a Patreon member. If you are a Patreon member, if you are, you saw that sweet, sweet episode of Love You Buddy brought to you by Zach and Justin uh -huh. on the Patreon. Uh -huh. It's our cheapest show on the, the damn thing. So you should, you should join it. Subscribe, love us, support Do us. Do the yep. things, buy the merch. The hat's backwards, but you know it's core memory unlocked. The hat's <laughs> right. backwards, okay? T Public. This is T Public too. Jaws nineteen. This time it's very, very, very personal. It's really, really personal. <laughs> okay, you can buy that there too if you want to. Go look for it. I don't give a shit. Yeah, you just gotta do. Why are <laughs> All there? right, I'm gonna crack open this NA because Daddy's NA for life. Doing Look at it. This, this is Go Brewing in Chicago, and they have a tap room that they do draft. I got to go to Chicago. <laughs> get what, me to Chicago. Get me to Chicago. I need a sponsorship. Um, but just to just tout this one more time, it's okay. not just another double IPA. Okay. I have not seen a double IPA. Uh, non-alcoholic beer before uh -huh. and let me tell you this thing is mint yeah it's mint no no so basically i found them because they have an oktoberfest and the oktoberfest can's great because it's skull it has a skeleton holding the beer and shit like that mm -hmm. so you know my spooky ass was all about it yeah but when i went through the website it was like oh okay if you spend like 40 bucks it's free shipping all right well i guess mm, i'll yeah. buy three packs so i bought this double IPA, which is award winning. I bought another one and the Oktoberfest and every single one of them, I shit you not, tastes just like a beer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I okay. keep upping the ante. I keep finding no. more on top of the more. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm doing the it. NA baby. is up their games, dude. Oh, God. Yeah, it's their great. Game. Um, but not enough of uh, beer chat. We'll save <laughs> yeah. that for. We'll save the that next, for love, love you, buddy. buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get it. So 1993's Jurassic Park. And I think I want to do the teaser first okay. before we get into uh, our core memory of it. Okay. Because okay. I think this was absolutely how teasers should be done. Absolutely. Right. Right. This is okay. where, where everything started. So I'm pulling it up right now. Bing, bang, boom. We got a baby and fuck it. I don't care. We're watching the big version. I don't care anymore, Justin. <laughs> All right, here we go. Right. All right, so we got a little mining. All right, so we're something out. We got that, like, John Williams light score. Yeah. Like, feels very E.T. Yeah. first discovery was made in the spring of 1990. Yes. From a mine in South America came a piece of amber okay. containing the fossilized remains of a prehistoric mosquito. One of many that had fed upon the blood of dinosaurs. From the DNA in that blood, science was able to recreate those giants. And for the first time, man oh. and dinosaur shared the earth. It happened at a place called Jurassic Park. 
Oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So that's the Jurassic Park teaser from 1992 when I searched that's what came up so wow. the teaser for wow. it came out a year before year before yeah that makes sense and obviously we're kids at this point so it means jack shit to yeah, me yeah for sure Excitement. and uh, nor does it give you any idea what kind, who the movie is even for but like that's what I wanted to get into I feel like especially in the 90s 80s obviously with things like yeah. Stephen King I think books to film adaptations were huge and yeah. I think this is one of those circumstances where Jurassic Park's a huge book for whenever yeah. it came out and yeah. then oh shit I know what that is it was for the nerds to be like oh god, god I'm telling yeah, you, I can this see is going to be good this is for I'm sure. telling you Jurassic Park it's good because that teaser gave no idea that it was Steven Spielberg directing. Right. <laughs> that gave no stars, no cast, no right. yeah. filming. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Just it's coming out. The premise of the movie, the setup for the movie. Right. And uh, pe people that are fans of the books, and it was a very popular novel, uh, definitely would be hyped from seeing that. And that would for create sure. the initial buzz that the movie would get. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. That is very interesting. That uh, I definitely have never seen that uh, teaser trailer. No, and I, or maybe I did, and it just did not lock into my memory whatsoever, because it's right. very not memorable as you know the thing. I think, but see, and that's what I was talking about. What I miss is teasers doing that, and it's so funny to me because J.J. Um, Abrams, who I consider to be Steven Spielberg light, mm -hmm. he kind of did that before like that's how he created his teasers i remember when the movie cloverfield came out and yeah. attached to it was star trek 2009 and okay. i was so excited because i was like ah oh, the first teaser for star trek and all the teaser is is you see like work equipment of like flame you see like ironing king 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 and it pans back and you see the starship enterprise being built Ah, and then it says right. under construction, May 2009. So this was right. January 2008. The teaser dropped. Yeah. For a movie a year and some change later. I miss that. I miss when we gave, I agree. we gave the budget like, here's $100,000. Uh -huh. Go do a teaser. It has yeah, nothing sure. to do for with sure. the movie outside. I mean, when you look at that, that's the beginning of the movie. They're digging yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, for sure. But let's get in, let's get into like, as a child watching this, Justin, because yeah. I imagine you watched this either in theater or home within the two years it came out. Absolutely. And I, this I actually saw in theater. This might be mm. one of the first movies that we've done that I certainly rem recall seeing it in the movie theater. Right. And one of my memories was I went with my dad and my younger brother, who's two years younger than me. So in 1993, mm -hmm. I was eight and my brother was six. Mm -hmm. And my my in the scene where uh, the lawyer gets picked up by the T-Rex, um, right. my dad covered my eyes, but not my <laughs> younger brother's eyes. <laughs> and I was so mad about that. And I was like, why did you put my eyes on his? And he goes like, I couldn't get to him. He was too far. I, did, I was right yeah. next to my dad. And I guess my brother was just one further away. Because it was because obviously my dad didn't know it was coming. So right. it was like a very quick uh, th like impulse decision that he made. And he got to me and he didn't get to my. So I didn't right. see that part until later on home video. <laughs> With the rest of the movie I saw in theater. It was like the extended cut. The director's yeah. cut. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I have almost kind of eerily a similar experience of, I remember specifically that scene of the T-Rex and it's doing the havoc to everything in that one moment. But yes, what I pick up on is I remember being like row four, five. Okay. And seeing that. So it being so close to me, I was like, this is you. fucked up as a kid. Just being right, like, that's yeah. a giant goddamn dinosaur on top yeah. of me. Yeah. For um, sure. So I do remember the theater experience. And I think this for especially our generation is going to be one of those theatrical experiences. Everyone remembers. Um, yeah, for sure. it was everywhere. I believe McDonald's had things. And if I'm mixing up 
Jurassic Park and Lost World, forgive me, but I do <laughs> think that Jurassic Park did have uh, those items. And at the end of the month, please, first of all, what are your memories of Jurassic Park? Leave them in the comments because at the end of the month, I want to talk about it and I want to look up all the merchandising, merchandising, merchandising <laughs> for this property and talk about it. because I remember the Nintendo games and stuff like this. I mean, yeah. it's really funny. The idea of this movie is like a, a, a focal point is Ian you know, fuck it. Ian's character, uh, Jeff Malcolm. Goldblum, Malcolm. Yeah. yeah Ian, Malcolm, Ian Malcolm, uh, Jeff Goldblum. One of his things, like you thought you could make it and you put your stamped it and you fucking stamped it and you put your, you patent. Yes. It. Right. And yeah, that's literally, that, yeah. And, and that's what we it. live in right now. Like this thing's Correct. on lunch boxes. This thing's on Correct. sodas. We're still making movies. Like the, the first images and logo for the new Jurassic world just released last yes. week. Yes. Yeah. I saw them. Yeah. 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 So like sure. it, it, this thing's everywhere still. Um, when you were a kid, Justin, did you find yourself enjoying this? Like, did you love this movie? Is this one of those ones that you went back to? Oh, for sure. Uh, I love this movie. I, and I also remember all of the toys that came out and mm -hmm. very, yeah. and very legitimate Jurassic, but they had to uh, kind of um, brand their, their dinosaur toys. Cause dinosaur toys were just all over the place and they wanted mm -hmm. to make sure you were getting the authentic J there was a JP, JP on the side of yeah. every single Jurassic park uh, dinosaur. So that was, authentic Jurassic park and not just right. whatever dinosaur you got. I remember getting those and then wanting those because of it. Right. Um, yeah. I used to, I used to have all that bunch of action figures and dinosaurs and stuff. And yeah. Um, so yeah, man, this, this movie was huge for me uh, throughout. Not only did it start out for me as a kid and it was a big deal as a kid, but like I grew up with this movie and as I matured, I started to identify with the more mature themes in this movie as well. Yeah. Um, to the point where it's like my most memorable scenes as a kid was the T-Rex scene and the Velociraptor right. scene. I mean, granted, they're, you know, it's mm -hmm. very much like horror and scary, but it's very also very much so when the kids are present. That's right. what I really identified most is when the kids were on screen. Whereas in now I'm like, kids can fuck off. I identify with these scientists <laughs> and I just want to hear what they have to say about it. As a kid, I wasn't even listening to what the adults were saying. <laughs> and now I'm like so fascinated. I, w I wish I could like partake in this co intellectual conversation that they're having right. about science and evolution and extinction and all that stuff. But anyway, so yeah, so I grew up with this movie and the movie grew up like with me. So I think that's, board, man. I think that's fair. I think that's the, the thing because I remember looking at the sequels being like, oh man, the kids are only in the movie of lost world for the first five minutes and then you never see them again it's like oh i wonder what they could have been when they were you know going with the movie but you're right like now it's like everybody's obsessed with uh jeff goldblum's character i think sam neill is kind of an unsung like action star yeah, it, it, yeah and what i really do appreciate about this movie because like i do go to nowadays looking at it where steven spielberg jaws is a horror movie and he put the two leads of this movie are younger horror stars like sam neill was a part of the omen when he was younger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then jeff goldblum was the fly right and it they were two stars that weren't like name brand leads at that time, right, like an Arnold right. Schwarzenegger. So to put these guys as them and hell, I mean, you've seen it. I don't think there's a fact we can talk about on this show that nobody know that doesn't know. Right. But like, yeah. but like Jeff Goldblum's character in the book, spoilers was supposed to die, but yes, they correct. keep him around in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's interesting the kind of takes the right takes in my opinion and i think this movie as well is my gateway for steven spielberg because i think this is like one of those movies that i get to go oh this guy directed et oh wait a second what's jaws i'm going to go watch jaws what are we talking yeah. about close and count this motherfucker did raiders yeah. of the lost ark yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like so this is good. the gateway for, in it's my opinion. Oh, so good. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, in, in even rewatching this movie, I'm just like, it's solely, it's so, it's so clearly made by like such a pro. Like, right. just every, I mean, I could, 
easily do a you know a, a three hour podcast where we rewatch beat by beat. I would have something uh, to say for every single scene of this film. Uh, you know, for even down down to the point where like I'm appreciating um, early on when it's it very much the setup of the film and it's all like adult science, adult science, blah 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 blah. They have that they place the kid in the movie. Right, mm -hmm. that he has to that was not impressed with with the Velociraptor, right? And then Sam Neill has to like you know scare him off or whatever. Yeah, like that's their age just to set up you know the 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 scariness of the Velociraptors for later on, so we know why we should be afraid of them. Right. But also it engages me as a kid. Like that was the part that I listened to. Right. Um, that was when I wasn't listening to what they were talking about as scientists and right. complaining about like, Oh, the computers are taking over and you know, I want to get whatever that was boring when yeah. I was a kid. But I right. love that they brought this kid in to again, like, cause this is like a family film. It's for all ages. Right. Um, and so I appreciate just in the inclusion of those little things, every line and every word is just so perfectly put in there. There's not a wasted word in the movie. I, I completely agree. I think it's one of those first instances that I can think of as a callback because he is explaining the, they come from the side yeah. and to fast forward, that's exactly what happens when the Raptor Wrangler is going in for it and he's forgot his own gosh darn rule. I know and there yeah. they are. Oh, you clever girl, clever girl. Clever yeah. girl. And he was like, you got, you got me, you got me. It's the deal. Okay. Come yeah. on. Have, yep. have a buffet kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, Yep. That, he was just impressed by them. Yeah, exactly. He was like, God, yeah. oh, you, oh, you little yeah, you got got me. All right, fair And fair. I love it because once that the Raptor is attacking, the one he was looking at originally was just watching, just being yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yep. tear him um, up, do it, do it slower, <laughs> do it <yeah>. slower. <laughs> yeah. um, I also like to give a big old credit to the cast because besides the leads, yeah. like you know, uh, Laura Dern, Sam. Yeah. Jeff, I mean, we got to talk about Hammond's pretty great, great casting there. Samuel L. Jackson and probably yeah. his his most like underrated like role because like he's very scientific. When I think Samuel L. Yeah. Jackson, Nick Fury, yeah. man on the move, yeah, uh, then I, you know a B A M F -er in any Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah, this right. he's lax. He's brought yeah, like he's down. toned down. He's a toned down Samuel Jackson, but yet it's he's still present there. Yes, absolutely, like and I love that he he got that role. Um, also, uh, huge casting decision: Wayne Knight, fucking brilliant character actor. I love him so much. I don't know, like, this is for a different movie as well but that I want to get into later and start next one. Can't wait. But I think Wayne Knight plays such a good heel and, like, shitty heel. It's, it's the basis of the whole movie because, like, there's another company that wants to get these embryos. He's not being paid by Harmon, so Hammond. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go sneak him off. And that entire lunch scene sets up the whole movie when yes. all that ass goes down. Yes. And I thought it was so beautiful. Just how snarky he is. He's like, Dotson, Dotson, we got Dotson here. He carries that scene. He makes that scene watchable. Yes. That is a scene that they need. It's a throwaway to scene. And yeah, they they needed that exposition, but it it would have been boring. And yep. he and then even when like he has the shaving cream and then he just puts <laughs> he it, on, dumps the it on the pie. <laughs> also just like tells you like what kind of person he is. He does not give a shit about other people. Like it's just telegraphed so perfectly. Um the, the And it's great when he gets his upcomings. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, a thousand percent. Because yeah. you see what a shitbag he is from the get go. Mm -hmm. He's such a fucking brilliant actor. Like, he, he is. Just does not get, he's so underrated. He does not get his due. Like, um, in that scene, just the, just the cherry on top of yeah, it, I think my favorite moments of the scene are when the guy's showing him what the carousel can, can yes. do. And he's like, <laughs> He's like yeah, he's I so love how childlike yeah. he was like oh I'm James Bond I get to be James Bond that's <laughs> how I always looked at it he was like I'm finally a yeah. spy he's excited yeah you're right he's excited about that and again that's what keeps us interested in the scene mm -hmm. if he was just like okay great okay great like totally flat and boring oh my god dude like yeah. he really so another honorable mention for casting is um the the kid timmy i fucking love him in this movie as well yeah he's yeah. fucking 
watched, especially in the beginning when he's following, following Sam Neil around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From car to car, and he's just got that long monologue where he's just going and going and going. And he yeah. goes, "What? What car are you? What car are you? Do you want to be in?" He goes, "Whichever one you're in." One you're he in. doesn't even pick up that he's avoiding. He <laughs> and then when the girl comes up, and he go, and she goes, she she uh, she said to ride with you because she said it would be good for you. And then he just looks at Laura Dern in the car, and she's <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All these little beats are just so fucking perfect, dude. Yeah, it's full of good character, and it's what everybody screams about. I still think there are movies today that have great characters, but it just goes to show you, like, they don't make them like they used to. Like, yeah. summer blockbuster, this is summer, I mean, it's ooh, it's ah. I mean, the first moment that we see a dinosaur, like, they did, he does the Jaws thing, and I love this about yes, him at the beginning, right, yeah. when the raptor does, like, yep. F up that hang, handler, yes. we never see him, we just see the eye, Correct. but then we, when we're revealed to not only the island with the beautiful score by John Williams. Oh, maybe, yeah, when that, when that, when they, when they take the helicopter and they first get to the, the island and then that score comes in, oh, my it's God. It's gorgeous, it's yeah. gorgeous, and then we follow it up with they're just driving around and i don't think there's a more notable double take when sam neil takes off his glasses right. and okay. looks so i i, got, oh. I must say this about this yeah i have a big thing to say about this scene. oh okay this might be mm -hmm. my favorite scene of all time in any movie i can't argue it i can't it argue it brings tears to my eyes it's my favorite scene in any movie ever when the right. two paleontologists get to see a dinosaur and then a brachiosaurus which i have tattooed on my shoulder boom for the first time i fucking love and it's just delivered perfectly especially because she's like a botanist so she's just looking at this prehistoric leaf right and she's, she's like oh my god look at like that and then so yeah he takes off his glasses and then he <laughs> he's like her. you think that <laughs> thing fucks <laughs> <laughs> and her mouth is just a gape and she stands up out of the jeep it's just right. chef kiss i absolutely love it dude my yeah. favorite scene anyway and i love legos yeah. and lego made that scene oh wow uh, now that being said it's too fucking expensive and i'm not buying of course. it of course it's too expensive. It's too it is goddamn too expensive. It's not worth sure. my favorite scene, and I love Legos. There's also not much to it. I mean, it's them in a Jeep and a giant dinosaur in a tree. Right, It's right. not that great of a build, but I do right. love that. I would love to have something that represents my favorite scene of all time. Right. Shit, now it makes me want to like reconsider, but I forget how much it is. As soon as I see the price, I'm going to be like, nah, not quite worth it. <laughs> Never mind. I don't love it. Anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> love. And I love that the the begin. So much of part of this movie is like such a like heavy discussion on the 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 ethics of even doing this in the first place. Right. Um. And then you know the second half turns more into kind of like that horror it's genre. The action theory. piece. Yeah. Yeah. Getting you know chased by murderers or whatever. <laughs> right. Right. You know, it's like a thriller, which I fucking love. I and the only Steven Spielberg can like balance those two things like so well man is oh yeah with no it's a it's it's interesting to see how many uses of his elements that he puts into his films like he knows we need the dialogue we need action we need that suspense because this movie is going to be two hours and i got to keep you all edge of your seat the entire time right yes um yes. And that's it. And like from there, it does things go awry because of Wayne Knight's uh, character, and everything gets shut down. As you know, I mean, you've seen the movie a hundred million times. So there's a bad storm that comes as a hurricane. Yeah. 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 And that's also like the whole like crux of the film is all mm -hmm. based on like everyone's plans go awry. Uh, you know almost, I mean? almost to the point of it's brilliant for the movie of thinking everybody loved this park so much. What a great fucking idea. This is what we're talking about. No one thought about a hurricane coming to this goddamn island. <laughs> right. Not one person thought, yes. what happens when yes. weather weathers and it comes and messes up our entire system? Everything, like, there's yeah. so much that doesn't work, which, I mean, that's I feel like sure. that's... They that's wouldn't have what... put Velociraptors there in the first place. 
Right. We would have just had bronchies. The second there was any casualty from a Velociraptor, they're like, we're putting down all the Velociraptors. Right. That's just it. No more Velociraptors. They're way too dangerous. Because the whole point, this movie starts with he's making this park and he needs the lawyers to sign off on the insurance of it, right? Right. Right. To make sure it's not too dangerous. Right. So, like, why have T Rexes, like, as if the Brontosauruses and other, you know, herbivores wouldn't be enough to right. carry a Jurassic Park? But right. even if you have a T Rex, whatever. But they also know these Velociraptors are insane. Right. Um, they know how dangerous they are. So it wasn't like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't really know. Like, they're, they tell you how dangerous, how fast they can move, yeah. how high they can jump, how smart and intelligent they are, and they're getting smarter, and then they they methodically check for, like, areas of weakness. And you're like, put them down. Why are we keeping them around for tourists? Put them down. So, yeah. Who okayed the hot to a dino? <laughs> <laughs> list because it should not be in here absolute <laughs> that part is absolute madness but yeah and i imagine like because they've been on this island for years now because you know they, they've they've raised all of these things from babies so that brought that brachiosaurus um was born in an egg and it had to right. grow to that giant i don't know how long it takes to be a full-grown right. brachiosaurus but right. so they've been on this island for a while doing all this research monitoring all these things and I imagine they would have had other being off of the coast of Costa Rica or whatever. I feel like they would have had other storms and hurricanes. They would have worked all this out. For sure. But but at the same point, though, I don't think besides their little area, because they, they probably started in a circle and went out. And the later beings being the raptors, being the being yeah. the T-Rex. Like, that's what I mean. We're moving them in the paddock when we get there. So it does sure. make me wonder if the idea was, OK, well, let's. Let's try Bronchi because we know they're just veggie dinos. Right. All right. Yeah. Let's let's yeah. get a little deeper. Let's yeah, let's sure. come on. More teeth. More teeth. What else like Jurassic World said. Yeah. That- what else she got? I get that. I get that. And so I, I also imagine when they discuss when they when they find a mosquito and they pull the DNA. Mm-hmm. I imagine they don't quite know what the DNA is of yet, right? right? Until right. they start growing it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then if they're like, Fair and enough. they want as many, they want as big of a variety as dinosaurs as possible. Fair enough. Um, so I can see them just being like, oh, we found a T-Rex. Like, oh, we just keep raising it. Let's see, whatever. However, right. they don't have any, um, they don't have any aerial dinosaurs yet. So right. clearly, and I'm sure they've got some of those DNA. So like clearly they were making a choice, like nothing that flies because we can't control the things that fly. So they were making I, a choice with some things. Well, it's funny that you say that because I remember when we left the movie, one of my first like things was like, what happens when pterodactyls come into play? Right, sure. Which is and granted, it eventually it. it'll get answered. Right. Uh, we won't be <laughs> covering it because it's past the nineties. But yeah. like, it, it was kind of like, what what's going to happen when we get to this? Uh, which yeah. these yeah. are questions for another episode, and, right. and yeah. we'll get. We'll get my point to being one of them. is, they they were at least were filtering out which dinosaurs that they would actually raise and which ones, but they didn't stop. They stopped there at pterodactyls, but they didn't stop at velociraptors. No, yeah, exactly. Um, but, so, and and then the movie does become this like you know the teams are separated, and I think he did a great job of like, okay, one team is going to be like we have to get back to the help center. Yeah. Other team, there's a button that needs to turn on yes. to turn on the power the and we're going to yeah. send you that way. So I like that there's just multiple try to get back to each other yeah, things. Agreed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. which was really smart for him to do because the kind of plot that that is, that's a very sequel Guardians 2, let's split the team up. They did it from yeah. the jump. <laughs> like they yeah. do it in the first movie. And I also I like that. That they had like a plan like versus mm-hmm. just trying to just escape and survive mm-hmm. there was like i like when when thrillers have a plan to a solution like okay well we have to get to this point to, right. to get this and that'll help fix our problems and so right. now then we know you know what's pulling the characters rather than just trying to survive or whatever yeah um yeah i, and agree. I like that the movie doesn't have an end like really the movie doesn't have an end because it's like we need to escape they escape and that's all we know right okay well okay so let's talk about some <laughs> character arcs. let's talk about some character arcs right okay, okay. One of them is like I, I, so I love that, and he even mentions it in the movie. So Hammond is is creating this thing, and he could have easily been more of a villainous character, 
right um, in this movie and i'm glad that they made him still just a sweet old man and he wasn't yeah. going to make greedy decisions because he was just a greedy like i want to make money off of this right right he really believed in this and he really thought it was going to be great and he didn't mm -hmm. want a price gouge he wanted jurassic right. park to be open to everybody not just the rich right which is very sweet of him yeah um, they're going to have a coupon day but he's got he's got <laughs> this lawyer who he you know he hates the lawyers because they're just going to mm -hmm. slow everything down. They want to make mm -hmm. sure all the investors are you know okay with what they're doing. Great. And so right. he's like, cool. To deal with this guy, I'm going to pull in these scientists to help prove to this uh, lawyer that like, cool, everything's cool, right? And I can get greenlit for the park. Right. So then when they get there, they actually swap roles. The lawyer's actually like, oh my God, this is a gold so mine. So much money. And the scientists are like, this is kind of not a good idea. Um, so I mm -hmm. love that they kind of like subvert his expectations of like right. what he thought the, their positions were going to be. Um, and then and then there's also like little B plots where like Sam Neill is not interested in kids. So for, of course he gets thrown with the kids right. to take care of the kids. And by the end of the film, you know, he's kind of grown an attachment to these kids and these kids, you know, he saved these kids right. lives, right. But right. now the end of the movie, it's, I love the scene where they finally get to the helicopter and Hammond's just, just stares off at this island that he's about to his dreams are literally oh they're over everything he's been working right. for he, he spared no expense is mm -hmm. has all come crashing down in this like horrific way and he's even though now he's safe he can now realize oh this is all over now like yeah. permanently over and it's right. like so sad and he's just staring there and then when samuel goes to grab his army he, he was like ah like he wasn't just like he could have played it where like he grabbed his army he's like all right i'm sad let's go but he was still <laughs> jumpy from you know trying to be killed by uh dinosaurs but then also he was just so in that moment and then it cuts to him in the helicopter and he's just staring at his cane with the little amber thing yeah and to me, that's more so like the end of the movie is it's kind of his movie where like it starts mm -hmm. off like I'm making this thing. He's on top of the world. He feels so great about it. He can't wait to share it to where it all comes crashing down and like it's over for him. That story of Jurassic Park, that's the ending to it. To them, it was just like we we got we went in for some reason and then we had to like get out of there and we got out of there. Thankfully, do um, you think he finally with him and. Do you think he funded their um, their thing? Oh, continue to. Yeah. Do you <laughs> right. think he continued? Well, you yeah, I mean, hopefully see. everything at the park was insured. <laughs> um, and so, you know, all that and money. And for some reason, uh, the reason why I was laughing, I wasn't laughing at what you were saying. I was just imagining when Har Hammond's standing there and he gets his hand on him, he just yeah. turns into Denzel Washington and he's like, get your fucking hand yeah, off me. Get your hand off me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I think, I think you're right. I think if there's any, like, Hey, what's the meaning of a character arc? Hammond's yeah. is perfect because he's full of yes. wonder. He wants this thing to be great. And it's turned into good God. What have yes. I done? He's Stop slowly, the madness. Yeah. Oh my, oh my. Um, yeah. and I love the fact of like the scientists. Yes. They are, they are taken back by the wonder with, when they first see dinosaurs, even Malcolm being like, the, you did it, the son of a bitch did it. Yes. But immediately, once once science is getting into play here, all of them are questioning. Like from the get, like Malcolm from the get's like, I don't know how you can stop life. Don't know how that's yeah. gonna do. Life finds uh, a way, all, yeah. Right, and like seeing all the procedures and seeing everything done, I do like the fact that that happens. And I do, and I jest about, it not being a complete movie because it's obviously a complete right, movie. Right, of course. Right, yeah, no, um, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. But I, I still think the movie is wildly fantastic, still holds up today. Oh um, I put it on the other day to watch, and it's gotten to the point where I've seen the movie so much now that it's like, it's background noise. Oh, um, sure, yeah. yeah. It's still still terrific. Um, I, I just, I, I do love it. It's one of those movies that I think is just, it's going down in history as a criterion at this point. Uh -huh. I, mm -hmm. As you know, you could say what you will of Steven Spielberg of like Schindler's, Schindler's List, uh -huh. Jaws, all this. I think I think this is the one that's just ultimately because summer blockbuster was created by Jaws, but I think this was the ultimate summer blockbuster with the melding of CGI with the dinosaurs yes. and actual yeah. puppets. Yeah, with the I mean, dinosaurs. the special effects were top notch and top they notch. still hold up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they did CGI in the right way and then did the actual um, dinosaurs in the right way as well. Now, this all being said, 
I'm yeah. still a petty bitch. Okay. <laughs> I can't get over every single time I watch it. The T-Rex scene when the when the the Jeep goes over the sidewall. Yeah. It's a yeah. big fucking glarer mistake. Okay. Do you know because... this mistake? Uh remind me. So they're parked in front of the T-Rex exhibit. Yeah. Fence goes down, T-Rex comes out. Yeah. T-Rex pushes them over, still at the yes. exhibit. But uh -huh. now it's a big goddamn trench. It's a cliff, right. When it wasn't, it was just It a wasn't little... a cliff before. Right, yeah, it was just a fence. So yeah, it, how does that happen? From. Yeah, where did that come from? <laughs> it's the, it's a, I'm still, st st I cannot not watch it without thinking it. it. Right. It's the, a glaring goddamn mistake. And I still sit here, perfect movie. <laughs> right yeah sure well, you know I mean, what i mean right well here's the thing so this is this is kind of like uh, the barometer for like when there's mis there's all there i don't know how many like perfect movies without mistakes there are. oh yeah I mean, it's just one of those things right could it could um, there be really and so like but the whole point is whether you're willing to overlook that mistake or not right yeah if the movie is good enough if everything else is going on in the movie to make you a not notice right away or b right. not care that's the mark of like a good movie Agreed. It, it, so, sometimes there are things that take me out of the movie and completely ruin it for me Agreed. um and uh and that's sometimes my problem with like horror films is the characters are making decisions that i feel like are stupid but it's just mm -hmm. at, it's for the suspense of the movie right i don't care i'm th i have more of like a scientific logical approach to it but that's what right. drives me drives me nuts but anyway right. uh so yeah so this is one of those things like yeah you can absolutely see a you know find a couple flaws in the movie no quite like even oh like, sure even, sure 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 the lost raptors wouldn't exist on this island period the whole right. movie over there would be no movie if you just wanted to go that one logical direction, but I don't yeah. care. I don't. No, 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 no. So right. I'm not attacking the movie, Justin. I'm just saying. I know that's what I'm saying, but I'm in support of what you're saying is how you can point right. out these flaws or these right. mistakes and then it just be like, but, and still think it's a perfect movie. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Sure. Um, what say you people out there? How's this movie hold up for you? Is it still that classic? Let us know in the comments. Like I said, at the end of the month, I'm going to do a solo episode, get your comments in, talk about it and bring up other things like McDonald's and other merchandising things. I love merchandising yeah. <laughs> and we'll get into it. Uh, make sure you follow us on throw me pod net. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube or pod app, whatever the fuck you do. Thanks for watching. Love you, buddy. I love you, buddy.